Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. Today I'd like to show you how to carry out dynamic analyses using ANSYS Workbench. Modal analysis can be regarded as the most elemental dynamic calculation. It can provide the natural frequency of a structure, given just the values for stiffness and mass. In contrast to measurement technology, this does not require use of a stimulus. The natural frequency is calculated directly, without need for a stimulus using a defined geometry and the associated material. We're going to look at the natural frequency of an industrial fan with a diameter of about 2.5 meters. We start the analysis by transferring the geometry into ANSYS Workbench, selecting modal analysis from the available systems of analysis, linking them in the process and allocating the material data. Under engineering data we can generate our own materials or select a predefined bank of material data. We're staying with the recommended standard material, steel, and we're going directly into the analysis itself. We follow the definitions in the tree directory from top to bottom. The geometry has been transferred. The next point would be generating the mesh. At this point we select an element size and allocate the geometry, define the size and initiate the cycle that creates a mesh structure. Once the geometry has been meshed, we define the conditions relating to the analysis. That is, the number of natural frequencies, the number of modes that we wish to calculate. We can enter 10 here, for example, i.e. the first 10 natural frequencies, the first 10 modes, will be calculated. The other thing we need with respect to the fan is boundary conditions. For example, this part is fixed. It's been shrunk fitted onto a shaft. Then we can furnish this surface with a fixed support. Finally, we begin the analysis, and after a short time, we obtain a list of the natural frequencies, first displayed graphically and then in tabular form. We can select these natural frequencies and then calculate an oscillation mode, an oscillation pattern for each of these natural frequencies. This is what the first oscillation pattern looks like. The animation enables us to recognize that the fan exhibits a rotary motion, a circular oscillation, i.e. this natural frequency of 67 Hz is a circular oscillation. The second natural frequency seems to take the form of a pan or a plate, i.e. this is an oscillation in the axial direction which pushes the edge of the fan backwards and forwards. The third natural frequency is a vibration that oscillates the fan around a lateral axis. In the same way we can look at the various natural frequencies at higher modes, where we simply see that this mode of vibration has more and more nodes, vibration nodes. They're consequently only induced at higher energies. It's generally the low natural frequency values that are critical, so we compare the natural frequencies that have been calculated with the stimuli that arise, and when they're in correlation, when they're close together, the natural frequencies and the stimuli, then you can conclude that there is a vibration-related technical problem, be it noise or stiffness related. For a design engineer considering constructive measures that will change the frequencies, the mode of vibration constitutes an important tool enabling them firstly to recognize the weak point of the structure from the perspective of vibration technology and then also what to do in order to change this deformation, this vibration or rather to prevent it. Having then taken constructive measures you can then shift the frequencies up thereby alleviating the situation.